I was very blessed to have been, to have had grandparents most of my adult life. Like they just lived a long time. And my grandmother was, um, I was really close with my grandmother and she um, was a real bookworm. So we called you know, the bookworm. She was part of book clubs and on the library board. And so very into books. And I think she was one of the triggers for me with books. So I, we would talk about books to read. We would read together. So we were into books. And so when I started writing books, then she just, that was the best thing for her because now I'm you know, in that world even more. So very close. And so it was really sad for me. Um, so she knew what I did, right? Passed her to church. And in every one of my books that she had read, she was my biggest cheerleader. And in, in every one of them, it talks about the love of God and encountering the love of God. We would have conversations when I would visit. And she was a part of a church, you know, a pretty formal denomination. But in her heart, she just thought all roads lead to God, I'm pretty sure. And um, so... I would, you know, ask questions and, and then she got brain cancer and died. Um, and I wasn't sure if she had crossed the line, like with Jesus. And I was asked to do her funeral and I came to the house and before the funeral and I met the, the caregiver, the woman who had, you know, been hospice to her in her home. Like she, my grandma was in her home, but the lady that took care of her. And she looked at me and, and she said, would you like me to tell you about your grandmother? And I went, yes, I would. And she said, well, let me just tell you, I, she was, I love Jesus. And I sat in uh, the room and I would kind of pray, you know, and at the, at the chair by the end of the bed, I would just kind of pray under my breath and the first night your grandmother said, you can stop that. I don't need that. I don't need that. And she goes, so then I just prayed quietly, just like, so she couldn't hear me. And then the next night I would try again. She goes, no, no, I don't need that. I don't need that. Just. And then she said about the third or fourth night, um, she wasn't sleeping. She was tossing and turning. And I went to her and I said, what's going on? And, and my grandmother said to her, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. And so this lovely caregiver said, I can help you to not be afraid. Do you want to not be afraid? And my grandmother said, yes. And I'm uh, emotional. And so this lady grabbed her hand and uh, prayed my grandmother into the kingdom and led her to Jesus. And then the next day she died. And so I just think we don't know the last moments of someone's life. And I, you know, just like we mentioned those days before, you could be the person that somebody, I was praying for somebody to talk to me. I had done my part, right, Mm -hmm. for somebody. And here's this this lovely woman in the end of her life leading my grandmother. And so when she told me the story, I just hugged and cried and thanked her. I said, I I can never repay you for what you should do. You don't need to repay me. So now just the thought that I'm going to get to see my grandmother eternity, yeah. right? Because this woman just loved her there, just took yeah. that time and that moment and prayed her there. So I just say, don't ever give up hope with yeah. people Amen. because you don't know the end of their life. I think God can make himself known to people. Right. And he did with my grandmother. He used this lovely woman, but he, who, who knows? I, I'm not going to limit how God reaches people. Right? Right. I just, it just was even more of a challenge for me. Like I mentioned before to be that person. Yeah. Right, to be that person that somebody's praying for their friends and their family members, and I want to be that person, right? To have my heart open to be that person. So, yeah, yeah, don't ever give up hope with people. I think it's so beautiful, Holly. Thanks for sharing that story. I think one of the beautiful truths that your story exposes and all of your stories expose is that we are not alone in wanting our loved ones to know God, that we do not carry that burden alone, that God loves our loved ones even more than we do, and that there is a way for every single person alive to know how much God loves them. God is so gracious that he's made a way for everyone to know him, and we're 100% a part of his 
plan. And I think we need to rest in the truth that it is not on us to save everyone around us. Right. It is not on us to save the world. The pressure to be a savior is not on us. Yeah. Jesus is the savior of the world. Yeah. He's the one who saves souls and heals lives and redeems marriages and restores families. He has the power that we don't. There is a, a story that we hear about Jesus in the Bible that I had like kind of a new revelation about this year. It's a story we often call the Good Samaritan. And we hear this story of a man who asked Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Because Jesus was saying believing in him was enough to be saved. And this guy wanted a list of things to check and things to do in order to earn salvation. So Jesus tells him of a story of a man who is beat up on the side of the road and a priest passes him by and a Levite passes him by and then a Samaritan comes and brings him to an inn and tells the innkeeper, I will give you all the money and resources you need to restore him back to life. You know, I have a credit card with no limit, anything you need, I can get to you for you to help restore this man back to life. And I love this story and it will preach. We need to be more like the Good Samaritan, right? We need to pay attention to the people who are on the side of the road, who are in our lane, who are hurting. We don't wanna walk by them, we don't wanna ignore them. We want to be aware. But what happens when we can't pay the medical bills for every single person? that we come across and what happens when we feel the pressure of the world to be the savior of the world, to be the good Samaritan for every single person. And when we feel like we can't do everything perfectly, we are tempted to do nothing at all. What do we do then? Well, St. Augustine makes the case that we are many times the innkeepers in this story that this story is not a story about good guys and bad guys. It's a story about a specific guy, Jesus. That Jesus is the good Samaritan in the story. And while this one guy was asking Jesus, what do I have to do to be saved? Jesus said, there's nothing you can do. I am the good Samaritan. I rescue people and I bring them to mm -hmm. the inn. I have all the resources, I have all the money, I have all the ways for people to know God. And while we are at our ends, this was St. Augustine's point, was that perhaps we are the innkeepers and as God brings people into our lives with what we have, where we are, are we being available at our inn, at our post, at our soccer games, at our place of work, with our family, at our dinner table? We don't have the pressure of the, saving the world on our shoulders. God is not giving you a mandate to save. He's called you to love a world that he has yeah. saved. And where, what can we do where we are? Yeah. Jesus is the savior of the world and we're just called to partner with yeah. him. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.